Good morning. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, I'm sending the links out. You guys, eh? Hmm. Me, I'm going back to freelancing and to my agency. As we're approaching the end of MSN, I just want you guys to know, I'm just telling you, we have like four more days in MSN. And honestly, I can't keep up with, with WhatsApp. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm going on, but the edge of that I'm talking too much on WhatsApp, I'm already tired. <laughs> I'm trying my best to see it on course of, of some people that just join my community and don't really know much. But most of what I'll be doing now is just creating content on YouTube and creating content on Instagram. So you can still learn from me from both platforms. But if you really, really want to enjoy and learn from me a lot, you have to be subscribed to my newsletter. Let me send the links to the groups. Okay, so we're done. All right. Hmm. Should I pull up my bottle? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we are talking about creating offers. I'm going to be using the book "100 Million Dollar Offers," which I totally recommend. Every one of you should get a copy of this book. Is uh, all right. Um. Yeah. Good morning. So. You guys, there's so much to learn. I might be checking my phone every minute because I sent some proposals out. And I want to make sure that this client chats, this client replies me. Okay, so um, let's start with this guy talks about the Grand Slam. I'm taking this on this book. I've used some of the things that I thought and it has worked for me. So I'm just going to be sharing a few of that with you guys. So the first part that I want to talk about um, is um, the Grand Slam offer. So it talks about creating an offer that is so good that people cannot say no, right? Which I think is an amazing concept. When you look at it, it's very smart. If I'm going to sell you something, I have to make sure that what I'm selling you is something that is so good that it feels like a steam, right? And that's what I go for in every offer that I create. You see the MSM offer. It's too good to be true. I like to create things that are too good to be true, right? Because the value is way more than the price that you paid for it. And what does that do for you? It improves your reputation, right? People know you as somebody that does more than what is expected. So, um, yeah, people know you are somebody that does. Oh, I'm trying to. People know you are somebody that does more than what is expected, right? So that's the kind of offers that you want to create, right? Or you want to sell something. You just have to make it look larger than life, and not it should not just be larger looking larger than it has to be, right? It has to be that good. It has to be that incredible. And as I tell people. And I've met a lot of, I, this morning, I woke up and I was reviewing ap applications to the agency. So if you don't know, we're currently recruiting at my agency. Um, we're recruiting content writers, we're recruiting copywriters, graphic designers, SEO specialists, motion designers, just a range of designers and writers and, you know, email marketers and marketers. If we are into digital marketing, we need you to 
send your application along with your portfolio, right? And this morning, what I realized was a lot of people really don't know what it means to offer your services or to create offers, right, to people. Because, in fact, I, I was just, I was just, I can't say I was shocked. I was just like, what's all this? This morning, I was reviewing applications so that a lot of people either didn't add their portfolio or they didn't add their, good morning, I mean, they didn't add their portfolio or they didn't add, you know, they didn't add anything to show that they can do what they are saying they can do, right? So there was a lot of things that I noticed, which I think still ties into creating Grand Slam offers. First of all, there's something I always am at that you have to get so good that you cannot be ignored, which is something I teach a lot. I've talked about it in the Bastard Money Magnet. Right? You have to get so good that you cannot be ignored. You have to be that good. You have to be that amazing. Right? So when you are that good, if you are going to offer your services to anyone, you are already good. So it's it's not going to be very hard for you to sell yourself, right? Or very hard for you to sell that offer. So you have to go in with the mind of one, you are so good, you cannot be ignored. And two, as much as you cannot be ignored, you're also creating things that cannot be ignored. I've worked with designers, I've worked with people, and most people don't impress me. Most people don't impress me. You, just, you don't do your best. You don't do work that is significant enough to open more doors for you. You just do work like, oh, let me just do this thing and get my money. That's not why, like, if you are going to work with me in my agency, it's not going to work if you are the kind of person that just does things for doing them sake. Right? Which is why when I started putting the agency together, I um I looked for the best I could find around. But then, of course, if we are going to scale, we are going to need more talent, which is why I started looking at oh, the send application. And what I saw shocked me. It shocked my brain. I'm still shocked this morning. I checked applications and I was like, Hell no, right? You first you have to be so good you cannot be ignored. Second, you have to create your best work every time. You have to do your best. Your best has to keep improving. Your best cannot be stagnant, right? So if you are going to make anybody an offer that is that good, you yourself you have to be prepared to do good work. You have to be prepared to do amazing work. What you promise people, eh, you have to be able to to create that thing that you promise people. So now. Personally, if I say, oh, you are going to make so so, so amounts by doing so, so so thing, of course, you are going to make it. The question is whether or not you, you are going to make it, right? So I, I don't promise things that I know is not possible. I promise things that I know is for sure possible, right? And um, if I say this is how much you are going to make doing this and you follow the exact steps, there are, there's a high chance that you are going to... But what I've realized is... <laughs> A lot of people they will say they are ready, but eventually you get tired because making good money requires hard work. I'm not even talking. It requires a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot of work for you to get good money or for you to get good at what you do. So, um, Alex Omozi explains an offer as um, um, what initiates trade? So let me just read this out. The only way to conduct business is through a value exchange, a trade of dollars for value. So the offer is what initiates this trade, right? In a nutshell, the offer is the good and services you agree to give or provide. Is how you accept payments and the terms of agreement. So basically, an offer is is the goods and services you want to provide, how you accept money for it, how you, you know, plan to give out, you plan to deliver. Everything concerning you delivering a particular good, a particular product, a particular service, everything concerning that initiation of that trade and, you know, the trade going through. So um, your ability to create good offers is what will get you paid. So this morning, I was sending out proposals to business owners, right? And I think I sent three proposals. Oh, there are more jobs this morning. I sent three proposals and I got one message. That's a notebook. I think I just sent them a couple of, maybe like 30 minutes ago. So I got a message recently. 
even in sending proposals, you are creating an offer that, oh, for this particular reason, for this particular reason, for this particular reason, you should consider me, right? So you've been able to create an offer cuts through job applications, cuts through selling on social media, it cuts through selling offline, it cuts through selling to investors, through different, in, in fact, selling yourself to people that you want to hire. So now if I'm going to hire anybody from my agency, I'm not hiring them based on, oh, come and work for me, I'm just going to pay you a loan. I'm hiring them based on, hey, I'm Kita. Here's what I've been able to do. Here's what I've been able to achieve. I guarantee that if you work with me, we'll be able to get so, so, and so results. You will get paid, blah, 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 blah. You, you get my point. So you creating an offer um, is very essential. So if you don't have an if you if you don't have a no an offer at all, you don't have a business, right? And of course, you can't create your dream life, so to say. Also, if you have a bad offer, um, you are going to have negative profits, right? And also, you have no business and you live a miserable life. If you have a decent offer, you are not going to you are not exactly at profit, but at the same time, um your life self is not moving forward and that's how that's what you notice with a lot of business owners it's not as if the business is dead or that the country is dying or there's no money the problem is that their offer is bad and they're not making any efforts towards improving their offers and so they are not making a lot of money or enough money sorry i have to keep checking my phone I do not want to send any message. All right, so bad. Oh, okay, I've talked about. And if you have a good offer, right, you make some profits. Your business is okay, and you live an okay life. But if you have a grand slam offer, um, you make mad profits. You create an insane business, and you access freedom. But the thing about creating offers, from what I've realized, is it takes time. It takes time for you to master the art of. Offer creations. It's not right. Of course, I've read this book. This will probably be my sixth time of reading this book since I bought it. I read it every time I want to create an offer. I read it from back to front every time I want to create an offer. Right? Because no matter how many times I read it, every time I want to, I I know I see something new. So I just keep reading it. I'll probably read it over hundred times if I have to. Right. So basically, um. If you want to make good money, the secret lies in your ability to create good offers. Because I'm just going to be scraping and touching this a bit. Um, I'm not going to teach everything. If you, if you are looking for somebody to teach everything, you have to go. To, you buy the book yourself. So, because you don't have enough time for me to touch everything inside this book. But the first part of creating a good offer is you is you finding what Alex Omozi calls a starving market, right? Um. A starving crowd, right? And he made the analogy that if you want to sell, um, let me say, if you want to sell beans, um, how did he even put it? You know what? I'm just going to skip the analogy because I can't even remember how we put the analogy. But the idea is that if you want to sell something, it's not even about the price. It's not about, you know, the price of it is not about the location alone. It's mostly about whether the people you want to sell to are hungry, right? And I'll give you an example. There was this day I traveled to Ede with my friend and we were going to visit our sisters. It was our sister's birthday. So we got there and the next morning when we were traveling back to Ife, we were very hungry. 
We looked around. We could only find one vendor that was selling food. So we're forced to eat there. My God, was that the most horrible food I've ever eaten in my life? Like, to today, I feel traumatized thinking about the taste of that food. And the funny thing was that there were people there that were eating and enjoying the food. So, again, it's usually not about the quality alone, the quality of what you are selling alone. It's mostly about whether the people that you are selling to are hungry for the thing that you are selling to them, right? A lot of people sell things that people are not hungry for, that people don't care about. You come up with an idea, you don't test your idea, you don't know whether this idea is something that can work. You are just creating an idea because, oh, you want to become an entrepreneur now. First of all, you need to be sure that there are actual people that are, that need that thing that you want to sell to them. Because it's beyond you selling something, right? It's beyond you just saying, oh, I have this idea that I'm going to sell out. People actually need to need or at least want that thing that you are selling. So if you're able to find a crowd of people that are starving for, you know, that problem that you are trying to solve, you have an... Well, you have a higher chance of sorry you guys eh? are they also low? I'm also <laughs> like this client has forgotten me. Are they also um, uh, my eyes are red, it's Christmas period. I need to make Christmas money, yes sir. Okay, so um, you need to find a crowd of people that, you know, that are interested in what you have to offer. A crowd of people that are interested in the problem that you have to solve. And I see a lot of vendors on WhatsApp, you know. And these people, you are selling something that your, your target audience is not even on WhatsApp, right? You know, you have, to, you have to be very, very conscious of the pricing of the things that you sell. For me now, because I've increased my prices to, you know, 25K, 150K, all of that, I'm moving to IG. Because most of the people that are going to be able to afford what I'm selling, they may not be on my WhatsApp. Bigger audience. Where right, so that's how you look at it. You have to make sure that you are in the midst of, you know, a starving crowd. People that actually need your, your services. So, um, how do you know um, um, what to look for in the market, right? The first one is the pain. Do they really, how much, I mean, how much is your problem worth? Depending on, you can charge as much as you want, depending on how much the problem is worth, right? If I'm trying to make a million, like if somebody is trying to make a million, I can sell them something of like 50K because they are trying to make a million. They are trying to make 100K. I'm just going to be selling something like 5K. Do you get, do you get the idea? Depending on the pay of a person, you're able to charge them more. So you have the pain. You also have their purchasing power. How much can they actually afford? Of course, if a person wants to make 1 million, but the person cannot even afford 50K, right? Or whatever it is I'm trying to sell them. It means... They are not starving enough. They are not my audience. They are not the kind of people that would be able to buy what I'm you know, trying to sell. So, of course, I'm just going to, I'm not going to target them at all. And that's why when I created my new offer for next year, I told everyone, I said, this offer is not for everybody. This offer is only for a few people that can afford this amount, right? Some of the things I create, is not for everybody. Of course, if it's expensive and you are still a student, you are still struggling to get by, it means it's not for you. So because of that, I usually create either the free version or I create, you know, something that is cheaper and much more affordable so that you'd be able to um, afford it. So another thing is um, easy to target, right? Whoever it is that you are trying to sell to must be within like you're rich, there are people that you can easily reach out to. So there are some groups of people that you cannot say, oh, I want to sell to, to, they are trying to sell online, but the people that need these services are market women who are not even on social media. Of course, your market is not easy to target. You have to go out of your way to find, you know, your, your markets, 
right? So you also have to make sure that this set of people um, that you're targeting, they are growing in numbers, right? There are some industries that are currently dying. So it doesn't even matter what you do. Um, it doesn't matter what you do. People are declining that are using those services. In fact, let's use Punch as an example. So if you remember Punch, newspapers back in the day, people used to be crazy about newspapers in your house. Definitely you'd have, you know, you'd have newspapers lying around everywhere, right? But as time went on, notice that there's a decline in people that use newspapers. Now, um, media houses like, you know, Punch, like Vanguard, like all of them are online. They have websites, they have social media where they share news, right? It's no longer about who is able to share the news or, you know, um, newspapers alone, because not a lot of people read newspapers anymore. So it's now online. So if you are looking at you now creating something like that and trying to sell it to people, you need to be, you need to be aware that, you know, these people you are trying to sell to, they are on the decline. So the market itself is not even growing, which means your chances of succeeding in that market oh sense yes okay so that reminds me some of you sent um your portfolios and we can't even access them like please if you are going to send out your portfolio to somebody make sure that you put the link make the link accessible don't go and make the link that what we're asking for permission you know for us to send out does not make sense so. okay so um the next thing is that in creating a gram a gram slam offer is that you have to charge what is worth. Personally, for me, I'm going to charge what I think something is worth, right? Except um, I want to use it as giveaway. I want more people to access it. Then it means I'm targeting volume, right? But if you really want to make good money, sweet money, you have to create things that are worth a lot of money. Do you understand? Um, so you have to be solving big problems. You have to solve problems that are worth more. That's how it works. You have to solve problems that are worth a lot of money. So, for a lot of people, though, um, you solve small problems. And that was what I was discussing on my newsletter, I think, a month back. I said, if you solve small problems, you make small money. You solve big problems, you make bigger money. So if you want to make a lot of money, you either solve um, bigger problems, you have to solve bigger problems for more people, or solve smaller problems for a lot of people. And the thing that is funny is that it is harder to sell to a lot of people than it is to sell to a few people. So if you are solving a very, very big problem, it means you can... You know, you, you can make a lot. We are solving a big problem. You can make a lot by just selling to a few people. So examples of um, businesses that does things like this, you look at um, high fashion houses. I'm, I'm talking about luxury fashion. People like Rolex, brands like Rolex, right? Um, brands like um, Ferrari, they don't have a lot of um, products for the masses. They just sell to the rich directly, and so they're able to make a lot of money. Of course, this if you're coming from the trenches, you understand that selling things that are expensive requires you to have you know, high capital to start. So you'd probably need time to grow to the point where you can sell things like that. So it's going to require you time. So it's not something you can just jump into at the whim with your low capital. So what you're going to need to do at this point is kind of grow yourself to a point where you can actually charge those high prices. Right? But you always have to make sure that you are not 
um you want to make sure that you are not under charging right make sure that you are charging a lot and you are increasing whatever it is that you're charging from time to time hmm. anyways at least to send more never think about this at all all right okay so i'm just trying to summarize because i have some other work to do this morning so you have to create offers that people feel stupid for saying no to, right? Um, the better the offer is, the more money you're able to make from the offer. The better the offer is, the more money you're able to make from the offer. So, um, Alex Omerzi says, <laughs> the goal is to be able to charge as much as possible for your offer. You need to be able to charge as much as humanly possible for your offer, right? And um, the idea is that you have to understand four major things for you to be able to make this possible. So you have to understand the dream outcome of, you know, whoever it is you are trying to sell to, the, the um, perceived likelihood of achievement, how... Can they achieve their goals with that thing that you are trying to sell to them? Then you also have to understand time delay. How can you save them time by selling them that thing? Then effort and sacrifice. How can you reduce the amount of effort and sacrifice it will take for them to achieve their goal just because you are selling them those things, right? So the better you are at making this thing possible for them, the, the more money you are able to make. So, for instance, um, how can you get people closer to their goals, right? So, you have to understand their goals in order to understand what the dream outcome is. Then, you have to be able to prove to them beyond reasonable doubt that the results that they want is what you are going to give to them. That you are going to give them results that they want, so, of course, another thing you'd have to um, do is um, um, if you can help them get that result fast, right? They will pay you anything for it. So, of course, my pricing is based on how fast I can deliver you results. I can teach you how to create your own brand strategy, but that will take you weeks and probably months of mastering for you to be able to create a, a solid brand strategy. Or I can work with you and create a brand strategy for you, which will probably take me a couple of hours, but you would have that brand strategy. Of course, I'm going to charge more for doing it for you and making it faster, right? And because I'm the one doing it, you don't have too much to sacrifice and you don't have to put in a lot of effort. So I'm saving you time. I'm saving you, you know, money. And because for every minute that thing is not done, you are losing money. Right, so I'm saving you time, I'm saving you money, which means um, you're able to get your desired outcome in less the time, with less while losing less money, and also can guarantee that you get results in comparison to if you are doing it by yourself. So when you look at it from that lens, I can charge whatever I think is necessary for me to charge in order for me to get you these results. Well, I said dream outcome, perceived likelihood of achievement, time delay, and um, effort and sacrifice. So, basically, you can charge whatever the fuck you want. It's telling me. You can charge whatever I think is necessary, unless I'm being nice. Okay. So, in order for you to... I'm, I'm actually just scanning through and um i'm scanning through so in order for you to um to make good money and create the best offer you can create you need to understand um the 
problems and the solutions that you are creating, which I think this particular chapter is a very valuable resource. People should give me time. I'm looking for money, as I told you. This WhatsApp money is not enough for me. I need to make like one million this month with just like a few jobs. I don't. I can't stress myself. Making a million on WhatsApp is stressful. It's not so shallow. Maybe we should be paying for me. I need this money. Yes, sir. Ah. Ah. Okay. So looking at the dream outcome. We are looking at the problems, we are looking at the um, obstacles, the problems and the obstacles. We are looking at how we can solve those problems for them and how we can increase the value and reduce the cost or increase the cost and increase the value. And finally, how we can create our, our high profits of our staff. I'm going to... There's no way I can explain everything inside this book. I've read it so many times, so it's just flowing naturally from me. It's probably going to take it time to read, read and reread, read and reread, read and reread. So the first thing is the dream outcome. You need to know exactly what problems that people are trying to solve, right? When I do brand strategy for people, I explain that there are three levels of problems that people face. People face the external problems, they face the internal problems, and also there is the philosophical problem. So there are three major problems that anybody faces, right? But the one that they know that most people tend to use to market is the external problem, which is probably I need to make money. That is the external problem. But the internal problem will be why you need to make money. And the philosophical problem is how can you make money? in a way that you still maintain your morals and your values, right? A lot of people, of course, you know that there are different ways you can make money and there are ways you can make money that are not clean, which is why you're not doing them. So you are probably, your major problem is probably how can I make money in a way that does not make me a bad person, right? So there are three levels of problems. So now you need to be able to identify what those three levels of problems are for each thing that you're trying to sell or each problem you're trying to solve. Right, so as soon as you are done with that, um, and that could be anything, I just gave you an example of probably making money. I need to make money, external problem. Philosophical problem, um, internal problem is I need to make money because I need to take care of my family. I need to make my friends happy. I need to make myself happy. There are things I would like to buy for myself. I need to improve my lifestyle. Like I don't like the kind of life I'm living right now. I would like to live a better life, right? So you also have that's right you saw that so um um ma, 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 ma. Eh? okay so as soon as you have the the dream outcome figured out like the dream outcome is the major problem that they're trying to solve next you're going to list out each problem that is stopping them from attaining that particular solution that they are trying to solve so the first one the first problem would probably be something like um um oh, oh okay so you want to list out all the things they must do in order for them to get this particular dream outcome so the first one will probably be something like um maybe it's for a business owner that is trying to make more money probably be something like lead generation right um you, you need to generate leads but you want to list out all the problems and all the reasons why they are not able to generate leads maybe they don't know how to generate leads or maybe they think it's difficult or maybe they think they don't have enough money to generate leads of course there are ways to generate leads that are 
cheaper right and there are ways you can do so so you just list out all the issues that you think they'd have concerning lead generation then after lead generation what do they need to do they need to nurture the leads so what are the problems that they are facing regarding nurturing leads maybe they don't understand how to create content that nurtures leads or maybe they don't understand how to converse with people in such a way that you know people love them and you know they build relationships with people or maybe they just don't know how to discuss and you know uh, like form bonds with people of course people have different problems within this different so your goal is to essentially write out each problem that they would face for each step of them each step leading to them making the actual money so you can do the same for brand strategy creation maybe they have to create a brand strategy or maybe they need to hire a graphic designer or maybe they need to do everything that they need to do really for them to get to that desired goal you want to list them out right so as soon as you list them out um yeah um what's next so you want to make sure that you create a solutions list. So you want to make sure that you create a solutions list. So list out the solutions to each of those problems one by one. So I want to generate leads, but I don't know where to start. How to generate leads, even if you don't know where to start from, or something like that. You give them something like, oh, um. Don't worry, you people can, as soon as my website is live, there are a lot of offers on there that you can check out to see what I'm talking about, right? So it could be how to find influencers that are um, the best for your business, something like that, um, to help you generate leads. You know, people pay influencers and they may not be able to generate any leads for them. I'm not like that, Sha. If you pay me, we get leads. Because I do know people. So there's that. Um, So you have to create a solutions list. You list out solutions for each thing that is on the list, right? Um, maybe the other problem we're tackling now is they don't know how to create content for that attracts um, a bit and nurtures leads. Just say how to create content that I'll be teaching you how to create content that attracts leads. A bit that converts leads. So you just take all their problems and make it the opposite and solve the problems for them, which is exactly what you are going to be doing. Right, so as soon as you've done that, you need to now come up with um, with the whole package of how you're going to sell it. So something can be easy to sell and um, it can be easy to sell or add to sell, right? Or it can also be easy to sell and add to fulfill. So you can easily sell the thing that, okay, I'm going to be doing consultations for everybody at 2,000 euro. And so you had like 100 people that came in. How easy is that to fulfill? Right, in fact, I can never do such. But how easy is that to fulfill? That is hard to fulfill because you're going to need to be on call with people for 30 minutes or because of 2,000 euro or what? So something can be hard to fulfill, easy to fulfill. Or you could sell something that is 15,000, but you're only selling to like um, 10 people. So you'd make like 150K, right? Or you could be selling something that is 25,000. You sell to three people and you make like 75K. You make good money for less, for less, for less work, right? So it's up to you really. And it's up to how you're able to convince people that you're able to solve their problems. So if you're able to solve their problems fast, they are most likely going to pay you more. If you are able to solve their problem fast in a way that does not stress them, they are going to pay you more. So, um, 
a couple of things you want to consider when solving people's problems is the kind of delivery is going to be right and i'm talking this is mostly services based business um this thing that you are selling are you going to be selling it one-on-one -on -one? something like a consultation it's one-on-one -on -one. and if it's one-on-one -on -one, i'm going to charge you more for it and i'm going to charge people that i'm teaching as a group right um it could also be like a group thing which if everybody pays if like 500 people pay me like three thousand naira. That is almost 4.5 million. So I don't mind teaching everybody as a group, right? Um, it could also be one to many, right? Um, if it's one to many, um, that's if it's one to many, that's you teaching a lot of people to also like a group stuff, um, or like online. So I'm teaching you online, like this something like the YouTube thing I'm doing right now. So um, it could be done with you could be done for you and do it yourself so do it yourself is i'm um, probably making a course that's teaching you how you can do it yourself right done with you would be like a cohort of some sorts right and done for you will probably be me taking up your service. so i'm going to explain this with the way i run my own business i'm sure you already realized that everything i'm teaching here should not be free that's I guess we're teaching the same class for like people at brand up. So there's done with you, there's done for you, and um there's do it yourself. So um if you are doing uh, with my business now, something like do it yourself would be my newsletter. I'm teaching you how you can do it for yourself, right? Done with you would be something like my um like brand or or like like or like maybe a consultation where we are discussing and i'm explaining and also doing it with you right and done for you would be my agency where we do everything you don't need to do anything we do it all for you right so um another thing you'd want to consider is how people are going to consume the thing that you are trying to sell it could be true videos it could be true you know podcast or maybe a live or maybe it's written. So for instance, MSM is live, right? Um, my newsletter is written. Um, so based on the offer share, that's what is going to determine the way we are going to go about it. So another thing is support. Um, how are you going to be able to communicate with your customers? But you also have to consider that you want to consider whether you're going to be messaging them on the phone, you know, chatting them up, calling them video calls, whatever. So then speed and convenience, like how fast is it for you to deliver on that thing? Like how much time do they need to put in? How much effort do they need to put in? Right. So you have to consider all of these things when you are creating your offer. So now you're going to look at um, I'm going to use the making money, for example, now using my own brand, All right? So, uh, if for my newsletter now, the offer is simple, send you newsletters three times a week. All you have to do is read them and apply them to your business and it make, you make money, right? But that is slower, which is why it's cheaper. It's slower for you to be able to achieve your whatever goals, right? Then there's the consultations. Right, it's faster. I highlight everything, all the problems. It's more tailored to you. It's kind of one on one. You can ask personal questions, you know, and I'll have enough time to explain and give you insights. Right, so, and there is the um, yeah, so there's that, right? So, you want to make sure that you now go through the problems and the solutions list that you already created. Remember, we created some problems and then we, we made some solutions to explain these problems, a bit to solve these problems, right? You now go to each of them, you now look at how you can solve each problem for them. So now, for instance, now, you have issues with lead generation, you don't know what influencers to work with. I can say, oh, you've provided a PDF to help you um, 
to help you understand what influencer is the best for your business. That's me creating an offer for you, right? So you have a PDF. Maybe the, this particular thing I'm creating is a course, right? So um, within this course, you will learn how to generate leads for your business. I'll be providing you with, um, because this is one to many now, the course is one to many. I'll be providing you with templates with ebooks. So you'll get an ebook on how to turn your leads into customers. You also get a bonus. We'll talk about that very soon. You, you'll be getting an ebook on how to turn your customers into I mean, your leads into customers. You also be getting um um a list of recommended influencers. You also be getting videos. Um, like 15 videos that explain how to make money on freelancing. Also getting how to make money as a services business owner. Like basically you're breaking down all your problems and you're highlighting the kind of solutions that you can give each one of them and the medium of solutions, right? It could be PDFs, it could be ebooks, it could be um, newsletters, it could be written notes, just basically trying to solve each problem individually and listing out the ways that you'll be solving it for them so they can have an idea right so as soon as you are done with that um the next thing you are going to want to do is make sure that you name your offer right you name your offer and then because if your offer does not have a name which is why we name everything See the business vibes newsletter. That's a name. It's not just a newsletter. It's the business vibe newsletter. Just to give people an idea of what you are subscribing into, right? Um, also, um, the bastard money magnets. Just to give you an example, a, a so it, it's catchy, it's interesting, so you can know exactly what you're paying for. I know exactly what you're paying for. Okay, so um, but the next part you want to understand is how you charge for um for the thing that you want to sell. First of all, make sure that personally. Eh, the price is always the thing that comes last. You don't want to mention the price first. Make sure that you mention the, the price last. You just talk, 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 and explain everything that they have to gain by, you know, um, maybe subscribing to the thing, buying the thing, um, paying for the thing, whatever it is. Just make sure that before you mention the price, you've explained all of the benefits, and the benefits are a lot. Like, the benefits are choky. Right, and soon as soon as you've done that, you can now mention okay. So for all these things that I've just listed out, I'm sure you have seen me do that plenty of times. For all these things I've just listed out, here's how much you have to pay, and it's like a token. So as a result, people are like, oh wow, nice, this thing is cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means you created a grand slam offer, and then you can just um, say this is the price. You have to buy it at this price. And as soon as oh people start jumping, on it, then you have to create scarcity. I see people like cracky do this all the time. If you don't pay now, you can't pay again after this particular period of time. Only so so amount of people can pay. Only blah blah blah. If you don't use scarcity, you are not really going to make a lot. Personally, I use I use scarcity a lot. So I just I say, okay, this thing is only available for 10 people. It's only available for five people. Because you need to give people a reason right now. Not later, right now. For instance, now this customer I'm going to be using for the business by newsletter is I'm going to increase the price at 5k. It's a steal, it's a steal. So I'm going to be increasing the price very soon. I'll probably announce that when I'm back on WhatsApp after I'm done with all my back end work. I'll announce that on my um, this thing. So it's a steal, and because it's a steal. I can increase the price anytime I want. And because I'm obviously, it's not even going to be, it's not a market, a marketing stunt or marketing gimmick. I'm going to increase the price. So that's like um, a form of scarcity. So another form of scarcity 
we know the lack of arms that which is the one it's currently using for um lmg is that the name of the course yeah so you tell them after this period is never going to be available again this is all we are making limited editions you see cars um car brands do this in lots they make just a few of that thing and then because there's just a few they're able to sell it at premium prices also you see designers designer items there's just two of these bags in the world and so because they are just two people people are like oh i want this thing i want this thing they make it scarce right also um they say okay there's just if you don't get in now you're going to miss out on all of these bonuses so that's another way to create this scarcity and the reason we create scarcity is because scarcity works like scarcity works it works if you make something not available to a lot of people people are going to jump in and want to get it as fast as they can so um so for physical products um can make just a few and you know make it scarce for services you want to make sure that you say you can only work with a few people and which is what may i do for my for consultations i can't work with this many people i can only work with this few people right um um if it's like a course currently i'm in a business school so it's, it also it's also capped as a certain number of people right um the truth is that when you are using scarcity you have to make sure that you are honest with it you are not lying right you're not saying oh blah blah blah, blah. It, it has to be honest there has to be actual scarcity for you to be able to use scarcity which means you have to have customers already for you to be able to use scarcity which means you cannot just jump straight to creating an offer again we'll go back to the fact that you have to be somewhere that people that are hungry can find that offer so another thing is um creating urgency urgency that means you have to do it right now that's urgency right um so a type of urgency would be creating like a quote and saying okay if you if you don't get in right now you can't get in until maybe like four months from now you can't get in until five months from now right so there's that's quotes like um you, you want to get in with this particular group because we're going to be teaching this group for three weeks um if you don't get in with this particular group right now you can't get in until like in two months or something so you also have like um seasonal urgency that's the one they do like sales you see a lot of businesses do sales i'm sure most people don't understand why sales work but sales work because you know it's only between a, a period of time if you don't buy that thing right now within this period you may never be able to buy it again at that particular price right um so so yes yeah, those are the ones i'm going to be explaining So another way to kind of get people to want to buy stuff is when you roll in a couple of bonuses, extras, right? For them, oh, if you get this thing right now, here's what you are going to get as extra. You are going to get access to this, access to this ebook I wrote, access to this thing I wrote, access, access, access. And people are just going to be like, okay, I want this thing. Take my money right now, right? Okay, so basically, um, and I think the final thing that you um there are different types of guarantees i'm not sure i can because i think for this class to live like an hour long so you can also add um guarantees the guarantees that me i use currently is is that you can get your money back at any time i'm always happy to refund people it's not my business. I just I've refunded you. No problem. They go right. I'm always happy to refund. Um, so yes, you can get a refund. That's the guarantee that I use. There are different guarantees. You just have to be able to prove to people that they have nothing to lose by taking up your offer. If you see my offer for the next three months for MSN, um, I, I said MSN for my new offer, which I have not named because I'm not done putting the offer together, but I've already sold a couple of slots, which is funny. Right. What I said in that offer is that if at the end of the period, they are not able to get their money back, 
um, if they're not able to get their, I mean, if they're not able to make or reach their goals, I'm going to refund them. That's what I say, right? And I can do this because I know I can, I can refund them. So basically, it means they have nothing to lose if they put in their money, they put in the work, they'll get the results. So, um, I think I've mentioned I've touched on a lot of things, so I've tried. And I think I'd like to rest here at this point. Um, if you learned a lot from this particular class, you know what to do. Make sure you like and you share this content with your friends. You share this content with your family members that you think would need this, with your influencers that you think would need this content. Anybody you think that needs this content and needs to know all these things that are summarized, you share the content with them. Then, um, or else, if you are not already subscribed to the Business Vibes newsletter, this is your call to subscribe while it is still at this price, which I don't know when you will be watching. I don't know who is watching me from, it's like eight months from now, or nine months from now, the price probably have changed. Sorry to you. But uh, if you are still watching while the price is less, go on and subscribe, right? Don't wait for me. Once I... Once I have people um, working on the offer, right? As you see, you've seen everything I'm going to have explained now, I'm going to have somebody else draft out this thing for me because I don't have the patience to do it. Um, once I have somebody else saying that, the price is going to increase because it's costing me money, right? To, to put all these things together. So I'm going to increase the price because if you are not, if you've not, I'm telling you now. Subscribe to the and um, to the business vibes newsletter. We're going to be teaching a lot of these things. I have copywriters on board that are going to be teaching you. I have a content creator on board that's going to be teaching you. So many people I'm also bringing in, right? When you subscribe, you see the vibe, right? Okay, so you guys, that will be all for today's class. If you have questions, feel free to ask in the next three minutes before I log off. Waiting, waiting, waiting. I want to apply for a job. Since you guys have not answered, you've not, you've not asked any questions, I'd like to go off, apply to this job, and get on with my day. Today is Sunday. I need money, 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 and I don't want to exhaust my money. So I have to be sinking straight. So I'll see you guys. Um, I hope this class was useful for you and that you learned a lot. In the absence of any questions, I'm going. Bye. It's all about the money, money, money.